My name is Ian Griffin and I'm the director of the Otago Museum here in Dunedin. I'm an astronomer. I have a PhD in astronomy from the University of London and um, I'm also a passionate aurora chaser. I've flown seven times to the Aurora Australis, um, five times on NASA's SOFIA Observatory and twice on commercial charters. Now the commercial charters are great because basically we fly to the Aurora and stay in the Aurora as long as possible. The Aurora flights are very special things and we try and set them up to maximise the experience for everybody on board. And um, the first thing to say is don't expect to be on board um, an airliner with the lights on. Pretty much as soon as we take off and once the food is served, the lights are dimmed and that's to make sure that we get the, our eyes adapted to the darkness. The likelihood of seeing an aurora, everybody asks me that question. Um, the Earth has got these two ovals, they're called the auroral ovals around the north and south magnetic pole. And um, those ovals are pretty constant. No matter how active the sun is, the aurora is always glowing in those, those, those ovals. And in principle, if we can get the plane beneath those ovals, you'll definitely see an aurora of some type. And the, the, the strength or activity of the aurora you will then see depends on how active the sun is. Certainly one of the cool things about this is you don't really know what you're going to see on every flight and every aurora is different. One of the really cool things about the aurora flights is, yep, you're not standing you know, on the ocean because you're over the ocean, but you're above the clouds and the view you get of the aurora uh, changes as well. So if you go to a Northern Hemisphere aurora tour, you're on the ground and the aurora moves backwards and forwards across you over the course of the night. In these flights, um, if we get the navigation absolutely right, we get to the auroral zone and we literally fly cross sections across the aurora as um, over the course of the night. Well, as a scientist, I'm, I'm absolutely fascinated by the aurora. And when you think about what's going on, the glow we see is, um, a glow from atoms high above the Earth's surface. Um, the lowest auroras are 50 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. Remember, we'll be flying at about 11 kilometers on our flight. So the auroras are gonna be way above us. Um, but the really cool thing about aurora flights is that we can literally control our flight path uh, during the flight and maximize the visibility of the aurora. But one thing I will say is, um, the waves that you'll see will be a lot slower than you see in videos because most of those videos you see are time-lapse videos and you'll see the thing dancing around very, very quickly. In fact, the aurora is a beautifully paced, slow, natural phenomenon and the waves, on a good wavy night, the waves will kind of glide across the sky rather than, you know, move across very quickly. So um, the aurora really is one of these things that the more you get into it, the more fascinated you will become by it. The views you get through a camera are significantly stronger than those you get with your own eye. Cameras are much, much more sensitive than eyes. Uh, so oftentimes you'll see a picture of an aurora and you'll see reds and blues and greens. Very often that's with a very sensitive camera. Your eyes tend to pick up the, 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 the greens and the reds quite well. And if there's an active aurora, you might also see some purples. But one thing um, I always advise to people going on these flights is bring a camera along because um, the camera will see a lot more than your eye can see and um, you'll get those precious memories as well. One piece of advice I would give to everybody is don't buy a camera the day before the flight and expect everybody on the flight to know how to use it. It's really important that months, in the, in the run up to the flight, you should be out taking pictures at night, practicing getting really good pictures of stars because that will really set you up to get those awesome aurora shots that you can show off to all your buddies when you get back. I mean, it's often been said, more penguins than human beings have seen the aurora australis. Uh, so you can join that happy throng of penguins and enjoy an aurora during one of these flights. <laughs>